CPM or critical path method. It provides a structured approach to sequencing tasks directly impacting projects timeline and also shows us the largest or smallest paths of the project. It has three columns. First one is the number of activities present in the project for completion. Then there is a predecessor box and these activities can only be started once the predecessor activity is completed. Like B can only be started if A is completed totally. C can only start if and only if A has completed. In a similar way, B in a similar way, F can only start if D and E both are completed. If there is no predecessor means an activity can start independently without any preceding activity. And in third column there is a duration of the activities. It can be taken as weeks, days or months. We assume them as weeks here in this example. Firstly, we need to make a node diagram of it. Project starts with activity that has no predecessor that is A. After the completion of A, the two other activities can start B and C simultaneously. When B completes, D starts and when C completes, E starts. And the final activity is F which will start only after the finishing of D and E. Since F is the final activity, this makes the finishing of the project. Having completed this simplistic diagram, we need to make a detailed diagram of this project which will contain duration, activity and all other things. This simplistic diagram needs to be translated into this boxed diagram. Each activity needs a complete detailing and these details will be early start, early finish, late start, late finish, slack and duration of the activity. Firstly, we will label the activities. This is A which initiates B and C. After B is finished, D starts and after C is finished, E starts. And the final activity F. That's the start of the project and that is the finished project. Firstly, we will fill out the easiest part which is the duration of the particular activity. A duration is 5, B's duration is 4, C's duration is 5 and so on. We will label them. Now we will find early start and early finish for the projects. We can put zero in early start since A absolutely no predecessor. So zero in the early start column. Since there is no predecessor, the early finish will remain the same as well. Five. Since A's duration is 5 weeks and, the, and there is no preceding activity, the overall project's time will be 5 as well at, this, at that point in time. Then we will write this 5 into, into this early start of the next box and early start of the C as well. Since both activities are starting simultaneously after the completion of A. In this EF box, what we need to do is to combine ES plus D, 5 plus 4 and 5 plus 5. Similarly, this 9 goes here and this 10 of C goes into the E of first part. Sum up 9 and 6, 3 and 10. This is a ES box, early start box of F. So what can be written? 13 or 15. Since we are in the forward pass of the project, we have to write 15, the highest number between the both. Because F can only start after, comple after the completion of both. 15 plus 4 equals 19. Now forward pass is done with the upper values calculated. Now, now it's time to find out these three values one by one. And when the project finishes EF, 
equals to LF means 19 will remain the same here we need to find LS LS has a formula so LS can be find out by minusing D from LF whatever the duration is that can be subtracted from the LF so 19 minus 4 equals to 15 we can write 15 in the ls column now when going backward in the project this ls box goes to the lf box of the previous activity so we can write this 15 here and here again making use of this formula 3 minus 15 will be equal to 12 and 6 minus 15 will be 9 again similarly this 12 goes here this 9 goes to this box Five. Twelve minus five equals seven. Nine minus four equals five. In this box, there are two options: five and seven. When we are going backward in the activities, we need to write the smaller number. Here, five is smaller than seven, so we'll write five. And again, 5 minus 5 equals 0. Now we have left very important box, which is this one, the slack box. If there is a presence of slack in the activity, that will mean that activity cannot be delayed. And slack's formula is S equals to LF minus EF. LF minus EF. So these are the two boxes that are in action for slack lf minus ef will give us a slack for the particular activity 19 minus 19 equals 0 15 minus 15 equals 0 9 minus 9 equals 0 5 minus 5 equals 0 so we can put zeros in a b and d on the other hand e has 15 minus 3 so the slack will be 2 similarly c has 10 minus 12 the slack will be 2 again so again slack is the most important part of the cpm and slack if, if slack is 0 the activity that particular activity cannot be delayed it, it has to start and end at a particular time for example b has a slack of 0 means it can only start at week 5 and it has to be finished till week 9 similarly d has a slack 0 means it has to start in week 9 and has to finish in week 15th f the last activity has a slack of 0 means 15th week will be the one that the f activity starts and till 19th week it shall finish on the other hand if there is slack like c has a slack of 2 means it can start on week 5 or week 7 similarly it can end on week 10 or week 12 e has a slack of 2 as well means it can start on week 10 or 12 or end at 13th or 15th week we need to find critical path for the project and and critical path is a straight line of slacks from start to end of the project here in this project a b d and f these are straight slacks so the critical path will be a b d and f why we have not included c and e because they do not carry slack of zero in them so they can be excluded from this critical path